As this world moves into their setup for war, there are many walking around asleep being led by the media with all the games this system wants to play. The media is playing massive games, talking about hypothetical diseases. World leaders gathering in Davos, Switzerland this week are going to discuss disease X, a hypothetical virus 20 times deadlier than COVID-19. Addressing a global pandemic is also something that a U next U.S. president might face. But what exactly is a disease X? According to the World Health Organization, disease X represents the knowledge that a serious international e epidemic could be caused by an unknown pathogen. Distracting with politics, showing us chess pieces being put into place for the coming war. And many people are asleep following all of this. But then there are many that are awake to what is happening in this world, and they recognize the danger and the potential for chaos that is upon us. Now, when you are awake to it all, fear can very easily come upon you if you're not fully sure about who is in control and what is truly happening. I mean, war, disease, and financial collapse are not easy subjects to deal with. And so I know many people want to put their focus there and just hear about that stuff and understand what's going on. But even with all that stuff in front of us, those things are still not the biggest threat and risk to the majority, whether they are asleep or they are awake. The biggest threat to everyone is probably the least spoken about or even understood. And those that might talk about it, they talk about it in a way that brings more confusion and spreads more doubt, leading people further away and astray, while also leading people without clear guidance or answers. You see, the biggest threat to the world is religion. And those other ones that speak against it, they're not leading people to understand truly what the problem is with religion. They're just leading people away from it altogether. But yes, the biggest threat to the world is religion. For a perspective and an example, the conflicts that are going on in this world right now, even though they seem secular, particularly in the Middle East, they're all about religion. In the grand scheme of things, this world is all about people believing that they have different religions and we will see them fighting against each other that will eventually lead to a major clash that in the end will bring all these different religions together. Religion is something that has the world at odds, everyone believing that their side is right and the other is wrong. And right now, I'm speaking about the major three religions in the world, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And while I can speak in great depths about the last two, Judaism and Islam, I will not focus on that because they are not my target audience. I need to discuss something that is a little hard to hear and may stir many people up, but at this time, it all needs to be said. This message, I know it will not be for everyone, because there are many people trapped in religion that they cannot get out of their own way and understand truly what is happening in this world. When I spoke and said that religion is the problem in this world, and I mentioned the three major religions in the world, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, I know that many people that watch this channel are able to understand why I mentioned Islam, and there are others who understand why I mentioned Judaism, while there are others who still don't really understand or even want to believe who these people are that the world claims to be followers of Judaism today. And that really is a very big topic in regards to the end times prophecy, but that's not the biggest right now. Where there probably is a lot of confusion is when I mention Christianity. And I know, maybe people want to say, oh, he's lumping up Catholics when he says Christianity, and that's what he's referring to. Man, I wish he would stop doing that. Protestant Christians are not Catholics. I keep saying that to him in the comments. I know that's probably what people are thinking. And yes, and let's be clear, while half of that thought is correct, there is still a major elephant in the room that needs to be pointed out and explained. Yahuwah has me dealing with a topic that is long overdue in regards to the next phase of the hijacking of our faith found from the scriptures and the confusion that has been introduced in regards to it. But before I got there, I was led to provide some clarifications and understandings first. You see, when discussing our faith, one area that people want to try to avoid are the lies, confusions, idolatries, the false traditions and false authorities within the religion of Christianity. There are topics that people approve that we touch on and there are topics that are so sensitive and make people feel uncomfortable that it's overly agreed upon that those subjects should just be avoided. The truth is that the devil has created falsehoods that we have been bored into, and some of it needs to be understood and dealt with if we're going to come into our Father's kingdom. Like race and skin color are not a division that's found in the Bible. That is something that Satan created. 
He created divisions and placed a hate of a certain people and surrounded it around skin color, masking what he truly has been hiding from everyone. If you're going to be ready for Yah's kingdom, you have to deal with that subject. There's no getting around it, regardless if you want to or not. But for most people, they think that it's something that you just can't talk about. What did he also do? He also set up a false nation of people that he claims are the chosen ones of the scriptures. And he created a word that scares people off when you're even trying to deal with it. If you even mention certain things, you're anti-something. And so people just don't want to be labeled that and be a part of what is called division today. So they live in the lie that has been created because it's easier to do that than deal with the lies. But it's very important that you understand that at the point in time that we're at right now, this cannot be left alone. If you're going to be ready for Yah's kingdom, you have to deal with this subject as well. I mean, do you understand what is going on in the Middle East right now, what they're trying to do? But there are people who refuse to understand it, and they are following false narratives that will lead them to the beast instead of Yahuwah. These are just examples of subjects that are in religion right now that people want to ignore because the truth is a little hard to deal with. But these aren't the subjects that I'm speaking of right now. Listen. I know that there will not be a great majority that will receive this and I will deal with a lot of slack in the comments, but I do believe that this will help many that have been confused and struggling with this topic internally, so I'm going to take it there. This topic is one main reason why the name of this ministry is called Truth Unedited, because what people are not aware of as they practice the religion of Christianity is that Christianity is truth that is edited. From the time that Messiah ascended and the apostles spread the faith and were persecuted and killed, from the beginnings of the early church to this day, there was a hijacking of the faith. There was a planting of seeds that did not bear good fruit, but they were weeds. And over the past, call it 2,000 years, just rounding up, there has been an infiltration of the faith that mixed the truth in with lies. And no, they were not always pure lies, an easy-to-see lie but just some editing that changed the faith of the Yahudim, which we call Jews today, who believed in Yahusha, and over centuries made a new faith, and they called it Christianity. And yes, I understand that. In Acts chapter 11, verse 26 says, in Antioch, they were first called Christians. But do you understand that that's a translation? Hebrew, they don't use Christ. They, it's Messiah, Mashiach. They would not be called Christians, that's from the Christos Greek, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. All I'm saying is that I understand what the majority says today. What I'm trying to get you to understand is that there has been an infiltration of the faith that mixed the truth in with the lies, and they weren't always just pure lies, easy to see, but just some editing that changed the faith of the Yahudim who believed in Yahusha and over the centuries made a new faith and called it Christianity. For instance, in the time period of the Renaissance, when they started repainting and creating all the religious art of Christianity that we see today, and Caesar Borgia became the face of Messiah. Messiah is the truth, yes, but the images that they created was editing. They were putting forth a lie that still exists in the falsehoods that people believe in today. You see, it's not all a lie because Messiah is true. It's just editing of certain truths that make it edited truth. And therefore, it brings in falsehoods. You see, edited truth in regards to our faith is something that's based on the truth of Messiah, but mixed in with falsehoods that have made the truth now a lie. Let me say it one more time. Edited truths in regards to our faith is something that's based on the truth that we know of Messiah, but it's also mixed in with falsehoods. And now that truth that's mixed in with falsehoods that equation and that mixture has now made a lie. And over time, it has been placed in the category of a religion that is now a part of the three world religions in this world. You see, the truth is that those who are going to enter into our father's kingdom will not be a part of these three world religions or any of these other smaller ones. I know that's a hard statement to deal with. I will prove this. He has spoken about a narrow gate that few will find. And I will get to that. You see, it is my desire that those who truly love our Father, the Most High Yahuwah, and truly accept His Son whom He sent, Yahusha the Messiah, it is my desire that certain bondage is broken, 
and falsehoods are identified. And in order to do that, the truth must be clearly told and then the lies clearly exposed. So what I'm going to do is display what the true faith of the scriptures called the way really is. And then Yah willing, we will proceed with explaining what it is that most people following the religion of Christianity are actually following today. Let's begin. Okay, so let me say this first. I recognize that this is a hot topic and I do not take this lightly. Let me just say that I know critics of this ministry will want to say, well, what makes you so sure that you're in the truth and everyone else is not? And let me say that that's very fair. You see, being a teacher of the word is a very dangerous thing that I do not think that most people that take this role on actually understand. I recognize and truly understand the risks I take if I am one that is leading people astray. Also for my own soul and the soul of my family, it's a very big thing. It's not something that I take lightly. But in the end, none of us can know for certain of anything until it all comes down. Faith is evidence of things not seen. And so while my faith is strong and I feel that there are clear examples that I can show you, I am not asking that you put your faith in me. I have never asked you to do that. And I never will. Catholicism, Lutherans, Calvinists, Seventh-day Adventists, they all have been directed to follow a doctrine given to them by men or women. As I proceed, I want it to be clear that in dealing with your soul, this is literally the most important subject that you could ever be dealing with. So I do not want you, nor am I asking you to just take my word for anything. What I am doing is highlighting things that are easy to just gloss over. And what I want is to provoke you to dig deeper and gain more understanding on your own as you seek out our Father personally. This is not about following me. I'm just trying to shine light on things people do not speak about that is mostly hidden in darkness that most people are scared to cover and most people are avoiding. This is not about me. This is about elephants in the room that people want to avoid that you should not. I hope that's clear. So with that said, I want to begin with some foundational numbers just to illustrate that there is a problem, even if people may not want to recognize it. According to this chart done by Statista, using data from sources of Pew Research Center, the CIA, the World Bank, this survey is from data from two years ago in 2022. Of the approximate world population of about 8 billion people, it says 31% of the world are declared Christians and almost 26% are declared Muslims. So, of the 8 billion people in this world, approximately 2.5 billion of them are declared Christians. Christianity is the largest denomination in the world. You see that. Now, if we dig a bit further in the numbers, according to this chart on Wikipedia, now, I don't claim that this is 100% accurate, being that it's Wikipedia, but I think it's close enough that I can use it. Of that 2.5 billion people, it said that 50% of them are Roman Catholic, 36% are Protestant, 9.5% Eastern Orthodox, and 2.5% Oriental Orthodox. Now, I won't focus on Roman Catholic at this time or Eastern and Oriental Orthodox. All those are different sides of the same coin, and I went over Roman Catholicism in part one of the Hijacker series. For most people, they live in hypocrisy and they don't recognize it because they know it's very easy to call out Rome, and many people do, but they do not recognize the influence that they have been following and that they have been under. What I want to deal with is the Protestant number, the 36%. Taking 36% of that 2.5 billion declared Christians, that's 900 million people in the world that are declared Protestant Christians. Almost 9% of the world population is declared to be a Protestant Christian believing that they are not tied to the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. That's a big number. So in this world, over 31% declare Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I use the English name here because I believe that a large majority that use his real name aren't even taking these surveys. I know I've never taken any surveys or declare anything like that, so whatever. Let's not get distracted by that. Over 31% of the world population declare Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And 9% of the world population have split away from the Roman church and declared that they are the true faith, Protestants. And when you dig even further in the Protestant churches, the numbers get even more separated and divided because of the Protestant churches, there's Lutherans, Anglicans, 
Methodists, Presbyterians, Seventh-day Adventists, Baptists, etc. This is a lot of religion. There are a lot of beliefs and doctrines mixed into Christianity. I don't think I have to explain that. But if you look here, there is a problem. Because with all of this declared belief in Jesus, if you really understood the word, the world should have gotten more pure and righteous with all these true followers of him. But what has happened is actually the complete opposite. With these kind of numbers and the power that Messiah truly has, with his name and the power that his name should have, the way the world is today, it should not be possible. And I want you to also think about it. Why would belief in Jesus be the largest faith in the world if this world is being led to a satanic agenda to worship Satan? That doesn't make sense. Shouldn't Christianity be the smallest faith, even if you subtract the Roman Catholic numbers? There is something wrong here. And if you're at least honest with yourself, you should be able to agree with that. So this is what I'm trying to talk about. What is truly going on? As I alluded to earlier, the fact and truth is that there has been editing of the overall truth in relation to our faith and the scriptures. And most people following Christianity are not aware of it because they are following religion and following man in their application of their faith. Our Messiah spoke and prophesied of this and found in some of the scariest verses in the Bible. One of them, not everyone who says to me, Adonai, Adonai, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Adonai, Adonai, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That's Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. So I want you to think about what he prophesied. He said, not everyone who says Adonai, meaning my master, or what people like to use Lord for today, not everyone who says Jesus is Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. So just because he said this, that I came to know Jesus Christ for myself and embrace him as my Lord and Savior. It does not mean they will enter into our Father's kingdom. When I use that example, it's probably easier to see that, right? Yahusha said, many will say he is Lord and say they prophesied in his name, even casted out demons in his name and done many wonders in his name. But he will tell them to depart from him because he never knew them those who practice lawlessness and did not do the will of our Father in heaven. And to me, that's very deep and very scary. Yahusha also prophesied to enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. So he also told us to enter by the narrow gate, but many, he said, will choose to go in the broad gate that leads to destruction. Because narrow, it's difficult. That way leads to life. And there are what? There are few who find it. So listen, there are clearly some issues here that we all want to make sure that we're not a part of, right? I mean, that should be clear. There are many that will call him master or Lord, but he will say he never actually knew them. And there will be many that are trying to go to him, but they are trying to enter in through a very broad gate, and that leads to destruction. That should be clear. And the problem is that those practicing Christianity as a whole, I'm speaking as a majority. I can't speak to each person individually. Speaking as a majority. The problem is that those practicing Christianity as a majority are greatly a part of this because they are practicing religion and not practicing the actual faith. In the end, it will only be each of our individual faults if he rejects us because while we were practicing religion, we never actually sought after him diligently enough with our own hearts. You see, we say we love him, but there are other things more important to us that we put in front of him. For perspective, think about how many Christians know what Cat Williams was talking about and gossiping about all that or gossiping about T.D. Jakes and Puff. But if you ask what the will of our father is, they don't know. And this is the answer, by the way. And you shall love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
There is no other commandment greater than these. You can find that in Mark chapter 12, verses 30 to 31. You see, this topic, I know, it can be a very hard thing to hear, and it's possible that you want to reject what I'm saying. And listen, that's your choice. You can just make this all about me and reject everything I'm saying. But I think you may want to just hear me out a little bit more before you make your mind up. It's very important. What I have done here is state the problem. But when I was making this video, it became way too long, and so I split it up so that it can be digested properly. If you feel that where I'm going, you don't wanna go, that's your choice. I had to split it up. I recognize that these videos can be very long, but these topics are things that cannot be understood in shorts. So what I did here, I've stated the problem, and this is it. The problem is that most people today that live in Christianity, they live in religion. And that does not actually mean that they truly know our Messiah and that they are truly following him. And there will be many of these people that will be rejected by him. And this includes those that believe they are in his church. And we know this for certain just by going to Revelation chapters 2 and 3 and reading messages he gave to five of the seven churches. To one church he says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. That's Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Another church, he says, But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Thus, you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Revelation chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. Another church. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Revelation chapter 3, verses 15 through 16. These are messages to his assembly, not to unbelievers. He has things against them, and if they do not repent, to some he will remove their lampstand. Others he will come and fight against them with the sword of his mouth, and others he will vomit out of his mouth. And there was more. My point is that religion, found in Christianity mostly, has blinded many people and they do not truly know Yah or our Savior. And in the end, they will be rejected by him. I do not want that to be the case for anyone. And though it undoubtedly will happen, I want to at least do my part to help many of you that do not want that to be you. So I'm going to share with you the difference between religion of Christianity and our faith that's found in the scriptures, which is called the way. You can choose to agree or not agree, but in the end, at least you have heard it explained clearly for yourself. So the next part to this will break it all down for you. So if you desire to understand this, please go ahead on to, and watch the next part. If you think what I'm saying is nonsense, don't watch, unsubscribe, because I'm going to keep going hard with this. For those that truly want to understand this, I hope this blesses you, and I hope that we all come into our Father's kingdom. This is my hopes. This is the purpose of this ministry. Continue to come to our Father, draw more nearer to Him, and be ready for Him. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. I love you all. See you in the next video.